this is right. one of the best answers to to the the supposedly complex problem of what is going on in Israel. This is Michael Brooks. I'm going to show you uh, what Michael Brooks said, and we are going to continue uh, on with our coverage. But rest in power to Michael Brooks, Michael Jamal Brooks, uh, on the Israeli apartheid. I think this is probably a really, uh, really good framework for a lot of people who have no way of comprehending the situation to understand a a role reversal, if you will. As someone with a Jewish background, yes. how do you feel about Bernie's plan for Israel, especially as someone concerned with foreign policy? I love it. It's an absolutely necessary. My Jewish values teach me to oppose apartheid. He's right. So for me, my politics are built on a base of, you know, economic justice. And I was already, look, I grew up, you know, I was pretty connected to left politics, so I always knew growing up about the travesty that was the human rights situation there. And I knew that people had think people I admired, like Nelson Mandela said, you know, South Africa is going to not be properly free until the Palestinians are free. Yeah, every single person that has either successfully or unsuccessfully fought and in some instances died to liberate people that you look at in your history books have recognized the oppression that Palestinian people have faced historically. Something to consider. Maybe your history book and the analysis missed that part. That is by design, of course, but that is the truth. My Jewish values teach me to oppose apartheid too. How could we suffer so much as people then perpetuate violence against other minority groups is horrible. Well, that is actually the truth. That's why there are plenty of still anti-fascist uh, Jewish organizations. There are plenty of Jewish organizations against the the uh, the, the settler colonial terror of, of apartheid in Israel. That's right. It's not, this is not a uh, yeah, Jewish voice for peace. Uh, there are plenty of examples of this. It's just like, ridiculous to say like no jewish people unconditionally support israel is stupid as fuck bro there's israelis that don't fucking unconditionally support israel i mean they're marginal tiny but come on like the idea that you have an ethno state or a religious state if you're committed to any type of broad-based social economic equity and civil society it doesn't work no matter how justified of course there's justification because of Jewish history for Israel. There's justification for Kurdistan because of Kurdish reality. There's, and the apartheid word specifically is both used by people who were crucial in ending apartheid in South Africa, like Desmond Tutu or Ronnie Casrols, who served as intelligence minister under Mbeki, who I've interviewed. And the other main people who use the apartheid word are Ehud Omer and Ehud Barak. It is what it is. And I don't support second-class citizenship and uh, occupation and sieges for anybody, no matter who they are. Are you not concerned about the binary between either condemning Israel entirely, being like also a stance that a lot of like very strong and notorious anti-Semitic people agree with versus like seeing this as more of a complex issue where it is wrong what's going on and that there's also a way to do this that Israel still exists and is supported? So, or is so it's not a complex issue. That's the big thing. It's super simple. There's one group that has enormous power. Bro, you hear the same arguments all the time, brother. Nothing has changed. The situation hasn't changed. Yes, I will get to Noam Chomsky talking about how he believes that the situation in Israel is even worse than apartheid South Africa. Because in apartheid South Africa, this is a really, really hyper-realistic and like very pessimistic way of looking at it. Because the reality is that... In apartheid South Africa, 90% of the population is black and is a necessary resource for manufacturing, whereas Israel's uh, opinion on Palestinians is they just don't want them there. They don't want them there at all. They don't see any need for a Palestinian coexistence. So their Relief. goal is eradication, slowly but surely, you know, slowly turning the dial up a little bit, you know what I mean, in an effort to not be as offensive as possible. And it's fucking worked for the record. It's worked. There, that's why there are so many liberals who are well-intentioned liberals who just like don't understand what is going on. It acts on another population of people with total impunity and is never held accountable for anything. So there's no symmetry in the relationship. So there's nothing complex about it. It's not complex. He's absolutely correct. It's not that complex if you are aware of the situation. I mean, since the inception of the Israeli state, 
but certainly if you are aware if, even at the very least since like the past 20 years i would say and just as like a thought experiment idw people listen to this listen to what he is saying here these are very this is a very important role reversal that i think contextualizes the violence under perfect terms okay if we know that if somehow a population of jewish refugees ended up in west bank in gaza and an arabic government in jerusalem and tel aviv had an open-air prison in, in what you know jewish gaza which they bombed with white phosphorus they killed civilians indiscriminately and they had no uh, provisions for medicine they had an embargo that blocked food that the electricity wasn't running that there was an over 48 percent unemployment rate, life expectancy, and malnutrition statistics were horrifying. The, uh, one of the major uh, policy makers in this hypothetical Arabic Palestinian state said, we need to put those Jews on a diet. In the West Bank, there was another Jewish area where there was a little bit more autonomy, but there was regular Arabic settlements where they pulled up the Jewish farmers' foods, they terrorized them with rocks, the security forces broke children's bones, and they couldn't drive their own roads. We'd all have no problem understanding what that was. So there's nothing complex about it. The second part of your question, it's, it's a pure asymmetry relationship. And the question is rights or not. So that's it. It's not complicated. The second part of your question, at this point, there's always been, there's always going to be crackpots who are anti-Semitic who condemn Israel. That's not what drives the movement, it's particularly in the United States. If you work around most people who are concerned with this issue, it's actually populated with a lot of Jewish people. The real question we have to ask is why is it that APAC is hosting a information minister for Slobodan Milosevic? Why is it that there's relationships between the Israeli government and far-right parties in Europe? Why is it that Benjamin Netanyahu's son is posting borderline alt-right memes? No, it was, a, it was straight up. He was straight up posting Nazi shit. Benjamin Netanyahu is also literally a Holocaust revisionist. He is a Holocaust revisionist. 100%. Another fun fact about Benjamin Netanyahu that like shocks people whenever I mention it. Benjamin Netanyahu is a Holocaust revisionist. How crazy is that shit? Think about that. He literally implied that Hitler only fucking wanted to kill the Jews because of the fucking Palestinian Grand Mufti who was literally put into that position of power by the fucking British. Fuck. This was, inc this was also, of course, roundly criticized by every Jewish thinker on the fucking planet because that's an insane thing to say because it's Holocaust revisionism. Hitler didn't want to uh, exterminate the Jews at the time. Which is fucking nuts. He literally wrote a book on it. What are you talking about? He definitely did. He definitely did, dude. That's nuts to say. That's literally like, that's like Nazi shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. Yeah, Hitler, uh, totally. He didn't mean it when he was saying like, uh, <laughs> he wants to exterminate the fucking Jews. He didn't really mean it. He, he learned that from the English-backed Palestinian Grand Mufti because it's somehow the Holocaust is also the fucking Muslims' fault. People try to make this distinction between Hamas and Palestinians. You are completely oblivious to the reality. Hamas is a Muslim Brotherhood fundamentalist cutout. It also happens to be the only popular form of governance amongst Palestinians. Do you want to know why that is the case? Do you want to examine the reason as to why Palestinians who are comprised of incredibly diverse backgrounds are now looking at a, a fundamentalist group of of Islamists, for the most part, as their only savior? Do you think that it is important to analyze that situation? Or do you think it's easy to just say, let's separate Hamas from the Palestinian plight. Let's separate Hamas and their actions. They are different. The reason why people do this is because they want to support Palestinian people, but they think the only support Palestinian people can get is if they are perfect victims. If they just sit back and die, except the media rarely ever covers it when that happens for year after year after year, when they march peacefully to that same border wall so they can peacefully return, which is their right, and they get sniped in the thousands. When it's like little kids, 14-year-olds, nurses, they get sniped and they get fucking killed, and nobody ever makes a peep pregnant women dying because they peacefully marched. The greatest comparison to the circumstances here is either to Algeria and its violent struggle against colonial uh, uh, French occupation or Nelson Mandela and the ANC 
fighting against apartheid because the ANC, the African National Congress, originally was a peaceful movement. It was a peaceful movement and they were peacefully resisting against this unjustifiable apartheid state. And yet it got to a point where uh, 69 black people were butchered, mercilessly slaughtered, where even Nelson Mandela realized that it is not necessarily just a struggle. It, when all other opportunities are lost, when there is no other way to push back against a colonial state, an apartheid state that is unjustifiably treating you like a second-class citizen, then you must engage in violent struggle. Violence, as I've always said, is a constant in politics. It's unchanging. Nelson Mandela was on the U.S. FBI terrorist watch list until 2008, long after he had won and had actually changed, or not changed rather, but moved to immediately facilitate peace in South Africa. 2008. He was democratically elected as a leader in 1994, and until 2008, he was still considered a terrorist. But throughout that duration, Nelson Mandela was told on not one, but two different occasions, 10 years apart, if you condemn the violence, we will let you go free. Nelson Mandela the first time said, how can you negotiate with me when I am still chained in prison? I will not concede. Once again, I believe in 1985, the last time they, they went to Nelson Mandela and said, we will free you if you denounce Marxism, if you denounce communism, and if you denounce the violence that your supporters are engaging in. And he said, through his daughter, no, I will not denounce Marxism, I will not denounce communism, and I will not denounce the violent actions that people are engaging in as long as the apartheid continues, as long as... We are not able to participate in political action. I will stay in prison. And they had to concede at the end. They had to release him from prison, and he became uh, the president. This is very important to understand because anti-colonial struggle is not pretty. Anti-colonial struggle is going to have a lot of unnecessary and, and horrifying acts of violence. Yeah. Hey, Algerian here. The National Liberation Front had to literally move away from the countryside and the mountains of northern Algeria to the cities. The movie Battle of Algiers showcases the brutal reality of decolonialization by taking the fight to the settlers themselves. It's an unfortunate reality, but that's how it's been historically speaking. Absolutely. Why am I talking about this? Because it's not, it's not that far off in history, and it's important to reframe this perspective because a lot of people see the violent reaction to an apartheid state and if you are not aware of the endless violence of facilitating said apartheid state, you think, wow, this is unprovoked. I cannot believe how unprovoked this is. That is by design. This is not unprovoked. There is no unprovoked violence in this circumstance. It is absolutely, unimaginably ahistorical to consider this a violent action that is completely unprovoked. The only reason why you can get away with saying that is if you are completely oblivious to the reality. Oh, this was uh, interesting. I mean, this is a good take. When Palestinian resistance groups adopted Marxism and supported the USSR, the Western media said they are fanatic agents of communism, which was, of course, a terrifying prospect for them uh, and for Israel as well. So they decided there's a better counterbalance there Islamist fundamentalists. When Arab resistance groups adopted the Islamic ideology and received support from Iran, the same media said they are religious fanatical agents of Iran. The reality is they're always going to be religious and fanat or they're always going to be considered fanatical because to push back against an apartheid state requires fanaticism. Do you really think Hamas is fighting for Palestinian people? I am not Palestinian. I don't know if you know this. My name is Hassan. I am Muslim, I'm Turkish, so a lot of people might get that confused, especially right now, because you're like, oh, this guy is fucking probably a, a Muslim guy. Uh, was, you know, who knows? I am not Palestinian. So, for me, the only assessment I can make is that, yes, Hamas is an, a fundamentalist group. Palestine is an incredibly diverse area. It is in, in well, historically was a very diverse area where Jews, Christians, and Muslims lived there under uh, the the uh, Ottoman rule, okay? It is not me saying Hamas represents the interests of the Palestinian people. Hamas represents Palestinian vengeance according to 
the Palestinian people because that violent retribution is the only way that they can see, uh, is the only way they see out of this struggle. Palestinians consider Hamas to be the only government formation that is at least in some way, shape, or form protecting them. They are fully aware that every single time Hamas does something that fucking Israel counters with uh, violent retribution that is tenfold. Do not take their autonomy away by being like, oh, this is a separate moment. This is a separate instance. I, I Make no mistake, the actions that happened yesterday are not simply Hamas. If you think that it's simply Hamas uh, and you are a leftist or you're a radical po uh, person who believes in radical uh, politics or at least aesthetically believes in radical politics, you're not seeing the entire picture. Were there brutal unjustifiable acts of violence that uh, civilians had to endure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen the fucking videos. I know. I saw the girl with the dreads in the back of the pickup truck. That shit is completely unacceptable. That might not represent the interests of the Palestinians, but that is violent retribution that was an inevitability. It's Violence is unstoppable in that situation. If all you know is violence, if all you have withstood is violence... If every single moment of your life is violent, some fucking douchebags are going to behave in that regard, uh, whereas uh, during a, a military operation, they don't even have a decent standing military. They don't have anything. They have no rules of engagement. They don't have fucking a standing military. They literally built these little tin cans that they strapped a fucking parachute to so they could fly over the Israeli smart border. You think those guys uh, have like a like a decent understanding of of uh, of how to to make sure that like uh, a lot of white Western leftists will uh, be able to continue defending them PR wise? Of course not. They're angry. They are reacting to the violence that is their constant lives. Okay, they have nothing. They have nothing left. I've said this already. To them, they are retaliating for the first time uh, directly inside of the border walls of their of their prisoners. They make no distinction, which is wrong because there is a distinction. Of course there is. These are people born on the other side of a border wall that who knows what their fucking perspective is. You know what I mean? They could literally be anti-Zionists anti living inside of Israeli borders. That is, there are plenty of them out there, okay? You don't know. You can look for nuance in the situation, but... I need you to understand that, that that wasn't a peace festival. That was just like a regular pe festival, by the way. Like uh, the that that is just like massaging the narrative, which is still unacceptable. Two hundred and fifty people dying in a fucking in a in a in a festival is ridiculous. It's awful. Here, uh, this is another thing I wrote on Discord. I'll read it because many people were saying like, "Oh, you know, Israel is going to retaliate. Israel is going to retaliate." Um, two things I said were: remember. Palestinians have nothing, no control over their supplies of water or electricity. Their peaceful coexistence project in the West Bank has led to a tremendous amount of bloodshed and displacement because there is the other side of this. Everyone says, oh, they lost the PR battle. They lost the PR battle. There is no PR battle in this circumstance. I hope you understand that. In their perspective, in their eyes, they are living in hell every single fucking day. So there is no PR battle. They don't give a shit about what our perspective is out here. You need to understand that. You want to know why? Because on the PR front in the West Bank, for years and years and years, Israel has only taken, Israel has only partitioned, Israel has only bullied, Israel has only displaced hundreds of thousands of Palestinians, an act of settler colonial terrorism that even Israel, if you go back to the fucking 90s, uh, would, would, would turn a blind eye to. Because they thought, oh, those are just the religious kooks that think that West Bank belongs to Israel too. And now that is the norm. First, they turned a, they turned a blind eye. When houses were getting bulldozed in the West Bank, none of those people fucking did anything, okay? The West Bank Palestinians weren't the ones who were violently uh, pushing back against Israel. They were peacefully coexisting. This is important to understand. They were peacefully coexisting under an apartheid regime. They built illegal settlements. First, they said, why are we giving money to these fucking religious kooks? That's what they said inside of Israel. They said, these guys are fucking weird. They're gross. They're going over to West Bank. Let's not even, they're freeloaders. Why are we giving them any money? But the state had different opinions. First, they said, we'll turn a blind eye to it. Then they brought in the bulldozers. Then they protected the bulldozers. Then they started building partitions on West Bank 
territory. They started cementing their fucking water wells. They started building partitions. They set up security checkpoints. And they became the military security apparatus in West Bank. So don't fucking tell me that when you're peacefully trying to coexist with Israel, they let you fucking peacefully coexist. Because what is going on in the West Bank is nothing but violence. Not to the same degree as Gaza, but certainly just as fucking violent at the end of the day. If you live in West Bank and you're a Palestinian and you fucking leave West Bank, you can't get back in. You are not allowed. Your life is fucking ruined. You've watched your own cities, towns, villages turn into parking lots, Israeli parking lots, where motherfuckers from Brooklyn come in and live there for free because it's government sponsored. It's nice free real estate. So don't tell me peaceful coexistence can happen. You can literally look to the West Bank to see what peaceful coexistence looks like. Those guys are at leading the charge on PR. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything, and yet they get bullied by settlers on a daily fucking basis. And now Ben Gavir and his fucking, that Kahana's dog is able to control and, and, and make the situation in West Bank even more insane. And that aggressive violence in the West Bank is what happened to lead to this incredibly like unimaginable military action that took place in southern Israel and is still ongoing. They took over precincts. They killed a bunch of fucking commanders. How do you think that happened? This is one of the most well-guarded per capita, like per ounce of land areas on the fucking planet because they got so horny on their endless conquest and violence of the West Bank that they did not look in their own fucking backyard. There's a reason why Palestinians... Look at the PLO and think that they're fucking Israel's own people, okay? They are unpopular. The West Bank leadership is completely unpopular. Do you want to know why? Because they see the leadership as just another cutout of the Israeli apparatus. They see that leadership as letting West uh, Palestinians in the West Bank get fucking slaughtered. They watch every day as dudes that don't live in fucking Israel or Palestine, that flew in from like Brooklyn or fucking Long Island or wherever the fuck, fly in and forcibly take their own fucking homes and tell them, sorry, this is mine now. And then you can't push back because the police force is an occupying military apparatus that comes in and fucking kills you. So tell me, how is peaceful coexistence going in the West Bank? It's not. This is why... The people of Palestine have no one to turn to but Islamist fundamentalists like Hamas, which isn't simply a terror cell, but also the governing body that was democratically elected in fucking Gaza. Not like those guys see the world eye to eye with someone like myself. I am not aligned with Hamas. But time and time again, I have said this exact same thing. You have to remember when imperialist actions occur in your country, the most reactionary elements are seen as those who will fight back. They will be seen as the violent liberators. You will galvanize them. And inside of Palestine, this was by design. They neutered and executed all the fucking socialist revolutionaries, every single one, until all that remained was the, the, the Mossad-backed fundamentalists. And now that's what all of these people want. That all of these people want is liberation. And the only people that will give them that, or at least will fight back so they die on their own terms, is that government apparatus and its uh, formation, its military formation. Like I said, there's so much bloodshed and displacement occurring in the supposedly peaceful side of things where Israel is objectively, like by the rest of the world, in the wrong 100%. When you're backed into a corner with all your socialist revolutionaries purged with no allies in foreign nations, the Palestinian people have no one other than a violent Muslim Brotherhood cutout fundamentalist organization that are, is now being seen as liberators, okay? They're, they're, they have nothing. They've done peaceful protests. They get killed. They get arrested. This is before we consider like the, the, like the violent existence. I mean, here, this is, a, this is an example I've shown you before. Here you go. Here is the PR, okay? Here is the PR that you see. Here is the daily life of a Palestinian living in the fucking West Bank. Stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No, no one, no one uh, uh, is allowed to steal it, yammy. 
Yaakov, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But well, you're you're not it's you're... easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. Yeah, you are watching. stealing my house. I mean, that's remember, this is not Gaza. This is not Gaza. This is West Bank. This is the this is the the peaceful coexistence. This is Israel allowing Palestinians to exist in an area that they should have no business being inside of. And let me tell you, you want to know something? There you go. Thousands of Israelis are seen headed to the Ben Gurion airport as they prepare to escape because they can do that. When Gaza gets bombed and and Benjamin Netanyahu says, uh, you know, move inside of Gaza because we're going to bomb certain areas, we're going to do military operations. Palestinians have nowhere to go. This is their home. This is where they've been pushed into. They, they can't just fucking fly out of, uh, of Gaza. There's no flying out of Palestine, especially because if you're in the fucking West Bank and you are Palestinian and you fly out of the West Bank, you can't come back in. They will, because their goal is to displace you. But yeah, if, you're, if you are uh, Israeli and living in the West Bank in territory that you, you do not own inside of someone else's home that you bulldozed and built your own on top of, you can comfortably leave. With air conditioning, you can go back to fucking Europe. You can go back to Brooklyn. You can go back to Long Island. You can go back because it's a vacation. Why do the people in the settler stealing house video speak English? What do you mean? Why do you think this guy has a, a, a like a like a New York accent? That motherfucker's from Brooklyn. We know. We know who he is because he's an American. He's like, oh yeah. Well, you know, it's expensive. Rent's expensive in New York, so I just want a summer home or whatever. So I'm gonna fucking go to. I'm gonna go to West Bank. You immigrated and reside on stolen native land. This is actually 100% true. You are correct. The difference is there wasn't someone living here when I, when I came here. At this point, that's what happens when you do fucking colonial violence like the United States did. He was living on fucking uh, it, the, the aftermath of indigenous genocide in America. But I guess that wasn't enough that he wanted to do his own in fucking West Bank against indef uh, people who can't defend themselves. How can you look at an Israeli mom and a two-year-old kid being captive in Gaza and justify it? Did I say that? Did I say that that's justifiable? I did not. You heard that because that's the only fucking way you can defend violent colonial apparatus every single day, brutalizing many fucking children many times over on the Palestinian side, which you turn a blind eye to. I never justified it. Shut the fuck up. You said that because you can't defend it. So condemn it. I did. That violence is completely unjustifiable. But guess what? It's also inevitable. And if Israeli leftists, even inside of the Knesset, can understand that, you, living in America, should be able to comprehend it too. Okay? But you can't because for you, it's just moving parts. And one side is always supposed to be the victim of asymmetrical violence. And the other side can, can be the purveyors of said violence and, and live in a constant state like that. And it's perfectly fine and dandy. But yeah, this is like, this is West Bank. This is West Bank. This is, uh, this is the peaceful coexistence. But not for these Palestinian workers at Israeli settlements. Look at the workers. Look at their faces. No one is happy. All of them are in debt. Here they line up single file to be filtered through checkpoints and authorized entry to work in land that they consider as occupied by Israel. عمل الجدار أخذ أراضينا وأخذ كل حاجة وإحنا الآن يعني في شعب في العالم. Is there anyone in the world who commutes to work at 3:30 a.m. الصبح الساعة ثلاثة ونص. For most here, there is little choice but to work for their occupiers. نصح الساعة واحد ونص بالليل الساعة الثانية الثانية وعشرة بطلع من جنين باجي هون على المعبر. لحد الوقت هاي هاي ساعتين على المعبر ساعة ونص على الوقت بس الوقت بشان نوقف دور. I want to show you another video because I think it perfectly captures like something that. Americans or people living in the imperial core, people living in the West don't fully understand. They can't fully grasp. That is like a normal existence and a part of like everyday existence for uh, Palestinians. Okay. Under uh, occupied uh, West Bank. This is what I wanted to show you. Okay. Before like that checkpoint is just like a, a, a part of daily existence, but there's more because that is the violent military apparatus forcing partitions upon land that you previously thought were yours, right? As the entire world looks on. So that part is a, is a part of daily existence, but it goes further than that. This is Betzalem. Here is a, a video that Betzalem posted on Twitter, which I think is very 
informative for you to understand that it goes beyond the violent military apparatus as well. Here it is. Israeli settlers who invaded Palestinian farmland and were stopped by his owner bully and attack him in front of soldiers in Bani Naim in the Hebron district on the 10th of August, 2023. I remember watching this when it first came out. He says, hey, why are you? He says, why are you coming to me? These guys are not the military. These guys are militarized settlers. And Ben Gavir has made this so fucking normal, okay? I need you to understand. This shit is too extreme for even Israelis living in Israel. What they're doing right now is considered completely unjustifiable, even by motherfucking Israelis who, who are currently baying for blood. Just remember that. Like, imagine your entire nation state was designed by imperial partitioned land so you you technically have like lived in existence of, of settler colonialism and you look at these guys and you go nah dog these guys are out of fucking control why the fuck are we giving them money these guys are the most passionate psychopaths okay look at this guy he's got a fucking in like look at him he's just kitted out talking to a palestinian who he fucking stopped and is operating like he's a part of the military or some shit he's not he says, get away. Do you want to shoot me? Shoot me. You see it. You hear it. He says, shoot me. What are you going to do? Kill me? Just fucking kill me. They're just going through his shit. Opening his car. So this is my land. Don't come here anymore. Do you understand? We didn't do anything that's not allowed. He says, we, we bought this land. He goes, nah, nah, you didn't. I don't give a shit. Look at his fucking face. Like, can you imagine? This is not a cop, bro. But yeah, if you look at the situation and you and you defend this existence, this is every fucking day, okay? This is every goddamn day. It's not just a violent military apparatus. It's literally these motherfuckers just like taking matters in their own hands. Like, understand that. The reason why I like this video, the reason why it's so maddening is because this personalizes the, the everyday existence uh, of living in a fucking a partitioned land by a, a violent colonial apartheid state that defends these kinds of actions. He's fucking booping his face, got the New York Yankees hat on. Look at that. Look at how fucking disrespectful it is because to him, that guy is not a human being. He's just a plaything in that moment. You can just do whatever you want to him. You want to know why? Because when he calls the fucking cops, it's the motherfucking IDF. It is an occupying force that's going to come in and defend them. They are there to defend this guy. They're not there to, to issue justice. They're there to defend him. And in most cases, literally arrest the Palestinian every single fucking time. He said he was forbidden. He's not a police officer. He's not a soldier. Why are you searching my car? You know why he's searching his car? Because he has a fucking AR-15. That's why he gets to do uh, what he's doing. And there's nothing you can do. He can just shoot you and kill you right there. And many have. That's the other part of it. Settlers fucking kill Palestinians all the goddamn time. You want to know what happens to them? Nothing. Rarely do they ever actually go to prison for that. Rarely. Think about that. Think about that existence, dude. Think about living and, and your neighbor just like fucking came here uh, and, and took your cousin's apartment, okay? And now he could just come over and like fuck you up. Same as Hamas is a fucking ridiculous equivalence, okay? Hamas does not have the firepower, the manpower, the, 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 the military apparatus. Hamas is nothing. That's why when they fucking flew into Israel, they didn't use F-16s, okay? And this is not even Gaza. You're looking at West Bank. You're looking at settler violence in an area that everybody understands Israel should have no business being inside of, and yet it is. This is what peaceful coexistence looks like. These are the people that don't do anything. They just get fucking bullied, ritualistically humiliated, okay, and killed in a lot of instances and displaced. You are desperate to say, look at Hamas, look at Hamas. Hamas does the same shit. There is no Hamas here. 
I'm showing you this so you fucking understand. Yeah, Israel conditionally releases Palestinians de detained over deadly Israeli settler raid. 19-year-old Palestinian killed last week by a Jewish settler. Incident was condemned by the U.S. as a terrorist attack. Settlers say they acted in self-defense after rocks were thrown. Expansion of settlements has seen rising violence. This is everyday existence, man. Why is there no pressure on Sisi from Arab leaders to open up the border near Gaza so the majority of Gazan families could escape? Can't imagine most of them would want to stay. At least half would want to leave, especially now. Yeah, I wonder why. Because every single, every single North African uh, country's leadership on top of every single Gulf nation state is in the pocket of the United States of America. Their people might actually want uh, some change. Their people might want emancipation for the Palestinian people, but it doesn't fucking matter. The leadership wants a, a, a fleet or new weapons. The people want emancipation, but it doesn't matter. They don't, they're not going to get it. Hamas doesn't care about the people of Gaza and the IDF don't care about the people of Gaza. Yeah, dude, you, you keep saying that. I know. Yes, I know. It's a way for you to have some consciousness in the West where you can sit there and say, yeah, no, it's just like these guys are bad. Yeah, everybody knows that already. Of course it's bad. It's, it's understandable. But to say that and leave it at that completely removes the nuance of the situation. So what are you going to do when, uh, uh, when someone in Israel turns around and says, oh, yeah? You think Hamas is separate from the Palestinian uh, cause? Then why is it that there's over 50% appro approval for Hamas and no approval whatsoever at this point for the leadership in West Bank? What do you have to say to that? What do you do in that situation? Now, are you cooked? What happens when, what happens when someone who is defending Israel and its violent actions turns around and tells you that actually people see Hamas as their only fucking salvation? What do you do in that situation? Because I don't agree with Hamas either. I think they're Islamist fundamentalist weirdos for the most part. It's not like we see eye to eye. And, uh, but there's one cause that they are seen as uh, engaging in, the only people that are engaging in said cause, which is fighting back and dying on their own fucking terms. I've talked to some people about this to understand, like to get a better perspective of how this happened, how this could have possibly happened. For the most part, including, you know, Chris Cappy, who uh, from Task and Purpose and, and many, uh, like, you know, a diverse background of people, people with military experience, people with experience in, uh, in, in uh, Palestine, people with experience in Israel. And the, the overwhelming narrative is that after years and years of occupation and, and heavily relying on tech, the Israeli forces got too arrogant and never expected this. They got so arrogant and, and they, they just did not expect this at all. Or they, they got complacent, they got arrogant, they moved, their, they moved their military apparatus to the West Bank to do the shit that I'm showing you right now, to defend that, to defend uh, these kinds of actions, because there's a lot more happening there that is like, that needs uh, additional military support. So the, the uh, supposed greatest counterinsurgency, uh, the, the greatest counterinsurgency military apparatus turned into a violent Gestapo force internally. So when you get too comfortable doing that, you forget basic border protection and things of that nature. That is yet another instance of living under a violent colonial rule in an apartheid state. That is where the fascist, uh, the, the, the fascist convergence creates problems with respect to internal security. That's because of how fucking far right the Israeli government has become that it does not offer basic securities to its own citizens because they're too fucking horny to keep doing more blood and soil conquest in the west bank i said this is the the the, the settlers bullying this guy right here watch bro Look at the bravery. Could you do that? I couldn't. Would you be able to stand up to your neighbor who's like fucking uh, is your neighbor now because he just took over your aunt's house and now he has weapons and the defense of an occupying force? This is in the West Bank. This is not Gaza. This is in the West Bank. This is the supposed tolerant, peaceful coexistence that uh, Western leftists are always uh, asking Palestinians to, to die for, right? And their situation certainly has not improved over the course of the past 20 years. So would you be able to fucking 
grab a person with a gun that stole your fucking neighbor's house who is now bullying you, knowing full well that when the army comes in, they're going to defend them. I wouldn't be able to do that. You are only able to do that when you have nothing left. It's not even bravery at that point. It's just suicide. That person in the beginning, the other guy, literally said, kill me, kill me. Just kill me. Just fucking kill me then. You know why? Because he has nothing left to live for at that point. He's just like, I can't do anything about this. Just fucking kill me. My existence every fucking day is, is horror and pain. All I know is ritualistic humiliation. These guys are not cops, chatters. That's important to understand. When you have nothing left, that's what you fucking say. And Ben Gavir has made this situation much worse because he made pursing firearms easier for settlers. This is entirely state-sanctioned. Uh, state I just want to point that one more time. These guys are not the IDF. The IDF is about to come in now. The, the adjudicators that are going to deal justice now are about to come in. The state is allowing them to do this. Why am I showing you this? Because I think it's the perfect video to instantly understand the plight of the Palestinian from a Westerner's perspective. We look at horrifying deaths on a daily basis, even at this fucking broadcast, right? But you look at an apartment block that's being leveled by Israeli munitions, and you it's that's far too alien of a concept for you to understand living in the Imperial Corps. You there's no equivalence there you can never comprehend what that looks like or what that feels like this on the other hand you can understand it's a person just like you who's abusing the violent apartheid military apparatus to his own benefit to just behave in this like incredibly incredibly dehumanizing fashion to another fucking human being those guys are not from there. They just came. They took your aunt's house. She's not allowed back into the West Bank because she had to flee. And now they're acting like they're the police. And when the police come, they're not on your side either. They're the ones who protect the bulldozers knocking down your home to make a new house for some dude from Long Island. That video is in the West Bank. That's not in Gaza. That video is a demonstration of what peaceful coexistence looks like with the Israeli state. Just to put it in perspective, Ehud Barak is a former prime minister of Israel, seen as a war criminal outside of Israel for his military service. And he says, hey, guys, this is kind of an apartheid. Yeah, Ehud Barak, um, friend to Jeffrey Epstein, by the way. The media has dehumanized Arabs so much there is no empathy given in any situation. Yeah, 100 percent. The current minister of social security, national security, by the way, extreme right is convicted of supporting terror group. Yes. Right winger Itamar Ben Gavir is literally branded as a terrorist by Israel. I've covered this a lot. I talked about Ben Gavir quite a bit. Um, it, dude, just Google Palestine or search Palestine on my fucking YouTube and you will see a thousand videos that I've done on the situation in Palestine, the situation in Israel. Um, he is uh, just a psychopath. He is literally so extreme that the Israeli military was like, you can't be a part of the Israeli military. Like, think about the violence that the Israeli military engages with on a daily fucking basis. This guy was too extreme. And now he's he's a Kahanist who is a straight up terrorist. Okay. Now he is inside of the government. Israeli lawmaker blames pogroms against Palestinians for the terrible attacks. By the way, this is Ofer Kasif. Uh, he is uh, a, a, uh, he's a, a progressive member of the Israeli Knesset. He's a, he's on the left in the country. And he quite literally says exactly what I said. I'm like, look at this guy. You know what shouldn't happen? Killing 260 people at a music festival. No, you're right, man. That just happened on its own because, like, bad guys wanted to do bad things. You're right. Dude, if they fucking subjugated you to a open-air prison your whole fucking life, you're going to break out eventually when you realize that there is no other way to get out of it. Do you think that this happened out of nowhere do you think this happened out of thin air are you fucking stupid do you think the the israeli state was just like peacefully coexisting and then these guys came in with fucking gliders out of nowhere don't say fuck off dude they didn't deserve it you fucking idiot my goal is solutions your goal is the continuation of violence you want way more than 260 people dying you want every single Palestinian to be fucking executed ruthlessly in the streets so that you can build another fucking theme park in Gaza. You fucking baying pig. You fucking bloodthirsty, violent pig dog. Suck my dick. How do you think this happens? 
You think it happens out of nowhere? You think these people are just like, oh, we were violent because we want to be violent. You think that's where violence culminates from? Or do you think it's because you have entrapped them, you have bullied them, you have subjugated them, you have humiliated these fucking people. Two million people live inside of Gaza. I, they're not even fucking people in the eyes of Israelis. Two million. The average age is 18 years old. 57% unemployment. They can't even get fucking concrete inside of Gaza so they can build fucking water salination plants because 97% of their water is toxic. They're dying of mass starvation. You cannot push people into a fucking corner their whole lives and not expect them to fight back at a certain point. Suck my dick, you fucking piece of shit. You and others like you who turn a blind eye to apartheid, genocide, and ethnic cleansing are the reasons as to why these people fucking fight back. So much so that you fucking cackling hyenas sit around and think, oh yeah, we're doing this in the West Bank too. That's the peaceful coexistence project. Look at the West Bank. You're doing it in the West Bank so fucking hard now that you left your ass out in the open in the southern fucking border of Israel. Inevitably, the contradictions become more apparent and the state will collapse. There is no way to have a fascist coalition because endless militant conquest always ends up failing. So if you care about your fellow Israelis, if you care about Jewish people living in Israel, if you care about humanity, even if you do not have a moral position against apartheid, which you should because you're a human, right? You're a human and it's disgusting to not have a moral uh, anger and moral outrage, not demonstrate moral outrage at the, at the sheer thought of an, a fucking apartheid state. Think about it from a more pessimistic, more cynical, but uh, self-interested perspective then. At the end of the day, as Hakim also correctly pointed out, if you are not from there, you can get on a fucking plane and go back to Europe or go back to America. But you know who remains? The motherfuckers that are from there. You cannot defeat with endless subjugation an insurgent movement that demands emancipation. You have to literally ethnically cleanse them, which is what Israel is doing slowly. But ultimately, people are going to fight back no matter what happens. Look, uh, Farid, we have lived all our lives under occupation. My father lived under occupation. My daughter is living under occupation. We want a time when we, the Palestinians, will be free. Hamas was not there 30 years ago or 40 years ago. But before that, PLO was described as terrorist. Any Palestinian who struggles for his rights or for freedom is described as terrorist. Yeah, America is disgusting in its propaganda where they say, oh, this unprovoked attack. It's like, bro, that implies the existence of a provoked attack. Has there ever been in the history of the United States where Palestinians have engaged in a justifiable and provoked attack? Has that ever happened in your eyes? Think about that. When has Western media said, you know what? The Palestinian cause is just. This was a provoked attack. When? Never. It doesn't matter what their fucking background is. It doesn't matter what their ideological position is. It doesn't matter when they are actually peacefully walking up to that very same border. Because they did that too. Gazans, by the thousands, bravely marched towards that fucking border. And Israeli snipers killed them and maimed them by the hundreds of thousands, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Well, not hundreds of thousands. They would kneecap them deliberately. 200 plus died. Tens of thousands got maimed. And we're not talking about like fucking Hamas in that situation. We're talking about women, children, people that were dressed as medics, like openly stating that they're medics. Press, civilians across the board. 42 knees in one day. Israeli snipers open up, open up about shooting Gaza protesters. And then they fucking cry afterwards too. That's the other side of it. Because then they, they also have the secondary uh, aspect of it where they're like, oh, I have such PTSD from fucking shooting 42 knees in one day. They do a YouTube apology. Retired IDF soldiers talk about their experience in the Israeli military and laugh as they do. One of the soldiers raped a 16-year-old girl. Laugh. He put Palestinians in a cage and killed them. Soldiers chased villagers with flamethrowers and set them on fire. If I saw school children with their hands... Uh, hands raised, I killed them. I fired and killed everyone. It's impossible for me to count laughs. Both of these men are living free citizens in Israel.
אחד אנס שם איזה ילדה בת 16, משהו כזה. אתה מבין? אבל זה מכוער מאוד, היה לנו בחור אחד, הוא נפטר בו. This is the Nakba. Remember the fucking uh, other Israeli dude in the Knesset that was saying we're going to do another Nakba and we're going to do it extra hard? Yeah, it's, it, he's talking about the Tontura massacre in, in 1948. Nakba is the forcible mass expulsion and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians from historic Palestine in an effort to facilitate and build the, the uh, Israeli state as you see it. Well, it's grown since then, but uh, the Israeli state originally. The Tantura massacre took place on the night of the 22nd to the 23rd of May 1948 during the 100, uh, 1948 Arab-Israeli War when around 40 to 200 Palestinian Arab villagers from Tantura were massacred by the Israeli Defense Forces Alexandroni Brigade. The massacre occurred following Tantura's surrender, a village of roughly 1,500 people in 1945 located near Haifa. The victims were buried in a mass grave which today serves a car park for the nearby Tel Dor Beach. Oral testimonies by surviving Palestinians were met by skepticism. A corroborative 1988 thesis by an uh, Israeli Haifa University graduate Theodore Katz, who interviewed survivors, was also met with denial. In 2023, forensic architecture published its commi commission's investigation of the area and concluded that there were three potential ga grave sites on the area of the Tel Dor beach that were connected to the massacre. And there's contemporary examples as well. We know where every bullet landed. This is how the Israeli army brags about shooting 773 Palestinians with live fire. Thanks to Beth Salam for capturing this deleted tweet, revealing the pride the IDF feels about the casualties they inflicted on unarmed protesters yesterday. This is from the march, the, the peaceful march to return. What I was talking about before. Where Palestinians every day by the tens of thousands walked to those very same, the great march of return in 2018. They walked by the tens of thousands bravely every single fucking day. Women, pregnant women, children, medics, journalists, and they got shot at every single fucking day. You want to know why they did that? Because they thought the world would have some level of humanity. They thought the Israelis would have some level of humanity. And boy, were they fucking wrong. Nobody gave a shit. Americans didn't give a shit. Israelis didn't give a shit. It was fucking, um, it was a massacre. And then you have literal Holocaust denial style argumentation. If Israel wants a genocide, why is the population of the Palestinians growing? Like, how are you a 13-month subscriber and supposedly a defender of a, uh, of a nation state in Israel and are literally using what Nazis used to fucking claim that the Holocaust wasn't real. How do you not see that? Why do you think 18 is the average age of Palestinians living in Gaza? Why do you think that that is the case? What happened there? Why is the average age 18? I don't understand. Because they die, chatter. They die. They die. Their life expectancy is m like nothing. <laughs> בתוך המכלאות, הם היו במכלאות, אתה יודע, חוטי ברזל כאלה, עגולים כאלה, אספו כל הגברים. הם יושבים שם, כל העם, על הרצפה, ובא מישהו ולוקח תת מקלע ומתחיל זה, מחליף מחסנית, מה אתה חושב זה? אבל אנחנו לא היינו כאלה. הוא היה יוצא דופן, הבחור הזה, כן, מה שהוא עשה. והשתיקו את הדבר הזה, והיו חבר'ה שלקחו את הלוויורים, ורדפו אחרי חבר'ה ושרפו אותם. זה היה משהו זוועתי, וזה אסור לספר, אני לא אדבר על זה, כי זה, זה יכול להיות סקנדל שלם מהעניין הזה. בשלושה, ארבעה חודשים הראשונים הייתי רוצח. מה זה אומר? אני לא לקחתי שבויים. בזמן קרב, אם מישהו הרים ידיים, משהו כזה. לא לקחתי שבויים. לא יכלתי לעבור לסדר היום. אם הייתה עומד, עומדת כיתה של אה, אה, זה עם ידיים למעלה, אז באותו יום הייתי רואה אותה, הייתי קוצר את כולם עד כדי כך. כמה אתה חושב אנשים הרגת ככה? <laughs> לא ספרתי. אני <laughs> <laughs> לא יכול לדעת בחיי. היה לי, היה לי מקלע <laughs> עם 250 כדורים. <laughs> ואני, תראה, יריתי, נלחמתי כולם. אני <laughs> לא יכול לספור. The reason why I show you all of this is for you to understand that this did not happen overnight. A lot of Americans literally get shocked and act like, wow, this violence must be unprovoked because our nation state 
our state is saying that it's unprovoked, so it must be unprovoked, right? It's like, how can you say it's not a provocation to exist under these conditions, dude? Those who try very hard to extract from people like me, from DiEM25, a condemnation of the attack by the Hamas guerrillas will never get it. And they will never get it for a very simple reason. Those who care about humans without any discrimination, those who care equally about a Jew and an Arab, uh, must ask themselves a very simple question. What exactly is their idea of the cessation of hostilities? That Palestinians are going to lay down their arms and go back to, into the largest open-air prison in the world, where they are constantly suffocated by the apartheid state. In other words, back in South Africa, in the era of apartheid, uh, what was the problem? Was it that um, uh, some uh, members of the black resistance, including the ANC, but not only the ANC, took up arms against the South African regime and sometimes killed innocent people. Was that the problem with apartheid? No, the problem was yep. apartheid. Apartheid, whether it's practiced in South Africa or in Palestine or Israel, is always going to procure violence because it's a violent, misanthropic system. Any human being living un under apartheid at some point will either die a terrible, silent death or rebel and often take innocent people with them. The criminals here are not Hamas, not even the Israeli settlers who are killing Palestinians. The criminals are Europeans, us. Every single member of uh, our German society, our French society, our Greek society, our United States society. Typical pan european We have participated in this crime against humanity over the decades by keeping our mouths our mouth shut as long as there is no trouble down there, as long as people are dying outside the reach of cameras, as long as it's Palestinians who die and not the occupiers. So this incredible tragedy must be converted into an opportunity for us Europeans to wake up and to redeem ourselves by demanding that collectively we take the first decisive step towards peace. And that is the destruction of the state of apartheid, just like we did in South Africa. Was this the cinema you were talking about? Yes, this is a Sidrot cinema. Nine years ago, this photo was taken of Israelis cheering in the massacres of Palestinians in Gaza in real time. Gaza was under blockade then and has remained under blockade since. Some described it as the best reality show in town. Others said it is better than the World Cup. This was called Sidrot cinema, where people would go on top of the hilltops in Sidrot, an area that was actually one of the towns that was invaded by Palestinians in this last bout. Israelis bringing up chairs to hilltops in Sidro to watch the latest from Gaza, clapping when blasts are heard. If you want to disprove the talking point of roof knocking being humane, you can show this video. I don't know if I want to... Is there TOS here? This is how the Israeli military is warning Palestinians of an impending missile strike in Gaza. A small missile shell is launched on the target, supposedly to give people a chance to evacuate. And then, a minute or more later, the real missiles hit. Guys, this is so moral. I can't. Man, I love looking at the morality of the most moral army on the fucking planet, you know? Man, they're so good. I love how many chatters have come in here. You can literally count them by the thousands that fucking came in here to defend that, by the way. Man, I love that. That's insane. It's like God chooses you to die today, pretty much. No, it's, it's fucking... Oh, man, I'm... I am in awe of the morality of the most moral genocide I have ever seen happening right before our eyes, folks. Man, they're good. Fuck, it's so goddamn good. Holy shit. Here, let's I'd like look to up now what, bring in my friend Mehdi Hassan, host what of Mehdi, Mehdi Hassan is saying. MSNBC. Mehdi, welcome. There's a lot to get to here. So first of all, explain to us what Gaza life is like when it's not in active conflict with Israel. 
So Alex, it's a great question. It's an important question to consider tonight because what happened in Israel was horrific, uh, deadly, heartbreaking. And the Israeli government is obviously going to retaliate, as you mentioned there. Uh, there have already been retaliatory airstrikes, but there's talk of escalation, of a ground invasion, of, you know, exacting a price. And you have to understand, when we talk about Gaza in the West, for a lot of people, it's very easy to conflate Hamas which is a militant group that carries out acts of vicious terror, as they did this weekend, with Gaza, which is a place that contains 2.2 million people, Alex, half of them children. Half of the 2.2 million people are children. And it's one of the most densely populated places on planet Earth. You've got 2.2 million people crowded into 141 square miles. So they automatically become the victims of Israeli airstrikes because it's so crowded, because it's so densely populated. And it's basically like living, Alex, in an open air prison. And those are my words. Those are the words of the former head of Israeli intelligence just a few months ago, Tamir Pardo. He said, we're treating Gaza like an open air prison. So that is the context that is so important for us to remember when we talk about Gaza as some kind of, you know, strange, faraway place, people shouting with guns. It's actually a real place with real people, families, and they're living in horrific conditions, Alex. You know, 59% of Gazans live in poverty, 63% food insecure, 70% of young people unemployed, 90% of Gazans have no access to clean drinking water. The UN Secretary General called it <laughs> hell on earth. How much more hellish is it going to get in the coming days? It was utter on this program earlier to me that, it, that it, it is a place that is without hope. Does that accurately describe the area to you? I mean, if you've got 70% of young people with no job, you've got 50% of the territory living in poverty, and there's no end in sight for the occupation, the blockade. Uh, Gaza has been blockaded by Israel and Egypt for the past 16 years. They control what goes in, what goes out, who goes in, who goes out. If you're a 15-year-old child living in Gaza, Alex, you have endured four conflicts already since you were born in 2009, 2012, 2014, 2021, in which thousands Thousands of Palestinians in Gaza have been killed, and you're about to try and survive a fifth one uh, as we go forward these days. So, yes, there is no hope. And, of course, hopelessness is what <sighs> contributes to the violence, uh, to the fighting, mm -hmm. uh, to the sense that you've got nothing to lose. And, you know, this is yeah. not some lefty perspective or Palestinian perspective. Israeli generals, Israeli intelligence chiefs, Israeli terrorism experts have said for years that if you don't give people hope, there is no end to this conflict. So... Mehdi, the Israeli prime minister warned actually civilians in Gaza, certainly those that are near the border with Israel, about what was coming and told them essentially, get out of the way. Here's the question. Yeah. Where are they uh, supposed to go? Yeah, as uh, John Stewart famously said on The Daily Show once, what do you want Gazans to do? Swim for it? I mean, they are surrounded on all sides. As I say, there is this blockade that's been in place since 2007. Uh, Egypt controls one of the entries. Israel controls the rest. There is nowhere for them to go. Israel makes it impossible for the people of Gaza to leave. And by the way, people say, oh, well, Gaza, it's not occupied. Why is it called occupied territory? The Israelis disengaged in 2005. The thing is, Israel still controls the airspace the territorial waters, most of the land borders, the population registry. These are people who are not free. And again, this is not about defending Hamas or justifying Hamas. or what. Hamas is a group, right? There are two million people in Gaza, and it's offensive, I would argue it's racist, to conflate all two million people there uh, with a militant group that kills innocent people. They are not to blame. And when I see the reports coming out of Gaza that already over 30 children have been killed uh, since Saturday mm. morning, I mean, the response to Israeli kids being killed can't be Palestinian kids being killed. That way lies madness. Hamas, like any other Palestinian militant group, is an indigenous group which believes rightly or wrongly, from its perspective, believes it's fighting for freedom. Obviously, many of us would argue this is not how you fight for freedom, by killing innocent people. Um, but they see themselves as a resistance group. They are a quote-unquote okay, Islamist fair. resistance group. I think, I think that's like, listen, listen, listen. I don't think that's a bad take. I think, I thought he was going to be way more ruthless, but he's right. The goal of Hamas is liberation. Just like every other fucking Palestinian group. They have ideological differences, they have differences in tactics, but everyone wants liberation. True whether it's Fatah in the West Bank, Hamas in Gaza. There has been no negotiations. A lot of people in Israel thought they could just manage this conflict forever, the status quo ante, just keep Gaza as it is, penned in, people in a cage for years to come. That's just not sustainable. Some of us were saying that for years. Jake Sullivan, Joe Biden's national security advisor, said a couple of weeks ago, well, you know, there's more, you know, it's quieter in the Middle East than it's been for a long time. Well, that quiet was never sustainable. To go back to what you said earlier, when you don't give people hope, they turn to the arms of groups like Hamas. Yep.